All right. Well, good morning. I want to begin by thanking the Society for the invitation to come and speak today. It's uh, an honor for me to have the opportunity to do so. And in terms of time, I know I'm asked to keep to 45 minutes. We're starting a little late, so if you want me to just uh, finish by 10, just cue me and I'll try to speed through some of my material. Mainly, I, I, just, uh, I will cut off the speakers strictly five minutes before the end, just so there's time for questions. Okay, great. Well, um, today we're going to be talking about prayer, and I'm going to begin by providing some background information on prayer and healing before we segue into talking about my project, which is the effect of intercessory prayer on wound healing in non-human primates. We see an increasing interest in spirituality and religion in our society, particularly over the last 15 and tw or 20 years or so. And out of the number of factors of spirituality and religion that seem to be piquing people's interest, one of those is the relationship between those and health, and in part driven by the fairly robust literature that we have that establishes a relationship, a positive relationship, not always, but mostly positive between those constructs and health outcomes. We're also a, a quite a religious and spiritual society. If we look at uh, data from the General Social Survey back in 2006, individuals who endorse themselves as at least moderately religious, if not very religious, was 63%, with 15% saying they were not religious at all. The picture is a little different with spirituality. The numbers are somewhat higher. 71% in 2006 identifying themselves as quite spiritual, with 9% not spiritual at all. And even though the levels of religiosity appear to be staying approximately stable across time, that's not so with spirituality. People are beginning to feel themselves as being more spiritual across time and willing to identify themselves that way. If we pose a somewhat different question and ask people about their belief in God or some higher power, we see those numbers spike up considerably. Around 95% of people endorse the fact that they believe in some uh, creator, some divine, something, um, some God. And of course, there's some variation by certain factors. For example, by age, we see spirituality and religiosity increasing with age. Uh, there's some variation in terms of geographic location in our country, with the South having particularly high levels of both those constructs, and there's an inverse relationship with education and spirituality and religion. Even though spirituality and religion talk about uh, two somewhat different animals, spirituality is more about the individual's um, quest for a relationship with the transcendent or the divine that happens individually independent of community most times. Religion we think of as an institution or a social phenomenon. It is a community and people are gathered together in community around some common factors, common sets of beliefs, common practices, rituals, symbology, and so on. There are some shared behaviors across both those constructs and prayer is one of them. So what is prayer? Simply defined, it's a communion um, or communication with the divine or the creator. It is practiced in some form by virtually every religion on the planet. There are a number of different types of prayer. There has been some work to empirically identify categories of prayer that have occurred across the last two decades or so. And we see that there may be somewhere between four and nine categories, and I've given you a selection of those up here. We can have conversational prayer, where one is engaged in some conversation or dialogue with the Creator or the Divine. Thanksgiving, prayers of gratitude. Meditative or contemplative prayer, we can think of this as a more receptive kind of prayer where one may be sitting, listening for the voice of God or experiencing God in some capacity. Petitionary prayer is prayer that an individual offers up on behalf of themselves with some request in mind, typically. It may be for some material gain. It may be an answer to some problem in one's life. It may be a request for healing. Intercessory prayer is prayer that an individual offers on behalf of someone else, and it's offered on behalf of someone else to provide that other person some benefit, and it may actually be to pray for healing of that other person. 
Do people use prayer for healing in our society? And the data would suggest that, in fact, they do. In 2004, the CDC published a survey of the use of complementary and alternative medicines in our society, and prayer is listed as a CAM. And individuals endorse the use of prayer for health reasons as the most common CAM in the year prior. 45% used it the year prior, with 55% indicating that at some point in their life they actually prayed for health. Of prayer specifically offered for one's own health, about 43% in the year prior, with 52% lifetime use. And prayer by others for one's own health, or being the recipient of intercessory prayer, a little over 24% reported that they were aware that they were, the receipt, uh, they were receiving prayer for their own healing the year prior. Many patients endorsed the fact they would like their physicians to pray with them and the numbers are fairly high. About 70% would like their physicians to pray with them, at least under some circumstances. And how frequently do healthcare providers actually use prayer? That varies. It, it varies depending on the type of provider. It certainly varies on the individual. It will vary in terms of the healthcare setting where the provider finds himself. It's, if it's a setting that is more open to the use of prayer in practice, then we may be more likely to see it. Here's some data, 2005 survey that queried uh, critical care nurses nationally to see about their use of prayer. And prayer was viewed as legitimate therapy by most of the nurses that were surveyed, with 73% identifying that they had used prayer in their own practice. Many recommend its use to patients. And almost 80% reported that patients or their families had actually requested prayer. And does personal prayer or private prayer? We're going to talk about intercessory prayer. It's a little different animal in just a minute. So does private or personal prayer actually influence health? And the data is clear that by and large it does in positive ways. There are positive benefits to engaging in personal prayer. And we see this across a number of categories of outcomes. Coping with stress. It helps people to cope with acute and chronic stress helps individuals to deal with illness, both acute and chronic illness. We see a reduction in terms of psychiatric symptoms and disorders, so we see lower levels of psychological distress, lower levels of depression, for example. And the converse, not only is the, our negative consequences, our negative affect diminished, we see an augmentation of positive affect. So people experience greater levels of happiness and satisfaction and well-being as a result of personal prayer. The pathways, the causal pathways that help us understand how personal prayer can actually affect positive health outcomes are really quite straightforward. They're naturalistic. There's nothing about this that is exceptional. There are several categories that bear mentioning. As a result of engaging in personal prayer, there can be psychological changes within an individual. There can be cognitive shifts. There can be cognitive processes that are um, shifted in the direction of providing salutary benefit to one's body. For example, control and self-efficacy are two cognitions that are robustly related to positive health outcomes. And we see individuals who pray have a greater sense of control in their life, or their level of self-confidence about being able to approach problems increases. We see emotionality shift so that negative affect diminishes and positive affect is enhanced, as I mentioned in the slide prior. There's some behavioral changes that occur as a result of prayer. Rest and relaxation occurs. Uh, increased health promoting behaviors, oftentimes with a consequent decrease in risk enhancing behaviors. We see that there can be social consequences of engaging in prayer. If one is in conversation with the divine, that can instill a feeling in the individual that they're actually cared for or cared about. And social factors, of course, again, another robust category for predicting positive health outcomes. And it's likely that there are some common physiological pathways that shift as a result of some of these prior categories and these have to do with the neuroendocrinological pathways, or primarily the stress response systems, and there are two. 
When an individual experiences a stressful event, there are two stress response systems that come online. One is the sympathetic nervous system. The other is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, or the HPA axis, with the um, consequent hormonal cascade that follows once the HPA axis is on, 